Hey all guys and welcome back to Jones's Question Time and uh, thank you very much for all the questions that have been sent in for this week as well, there's been, been quite a few uh, so we've got quite a few to get to get through, I just want to say at the start of this video, um, I know I say it every week but uh, there's kind of a, a, an extra special plea really for, uh, for questions um, for this next week really because between uh, Christmas, well the next time I do a video uh, a question time video which will be between Quis Christmas <laughs> between Christmas and New Year's and when I get a new speech impediment um, it will be between Christmas and New Year's and I'm going to do a kind of a bumper question time video where I'm just getting everyone just to ask any question they like and I'm just wiping the slate, slate clean so you know any questions that have been answered already um, this year whilst I've been doing doing the series I'm just going to wipe the slate clean and I will answer any question you want so as always there's no limit literally just whatever you want to know or just some random silly questions which I always like just get them in and we're going to go through like say 20, 20 25 uh, questions hopefully if, if you guys actually send them all in but you know I've got like 600 and of well 665 subscribers I think or something uh, you know average like sort of 40 50 views on videos so you know I would like to see more of you kind of get involved and everything that would be really nice I mean I'm always thankful for the regulars for getting involved uh, you know there's there's quite a few to mention but I would like it if, if you know I had some new questions from new people that I haven't heard questions from before um, so yeah if you could do that over the next sort of coming weeks uh, I will be recording that video like I say sort of between Christmas Day and, uh, and New Year's and uh, yeah hopefully that will be a fun bumper episode so anyway let's get started with the first question for today what do you think of American football do you watch or like it? Um, the answer is, is no, basically, to both of them. Uh, I have watched American football before. Uh, one of my older uh, school pals is, is kind of into it. So I've watched a few with him, and I remember uh, twice uh, during university staying up fairly late to, uh, to watch the Super Bowl. Um, for me, American football, I, I just find it really boring. Um, it's just it's two stop start that that's what gets me it just it just annoys me like the actual you know I can kind of admire and respect the kind of tactical play that there is to it um, you know I've got a lot of admiration for them and um, you know there's obviously a lot of skill involved but it just it doesn't do it for me I'm afraid it's it's just like I say whenever I watch a game you know I kind of get bored after 15 20 minutes because hardly anything's happened really um, so it's yeah I'm sorry it's not really my kind of thing to be honest uh, I mean it's it is nice to see sort of a, a big American sport starting to uh, do well over because I mean sort of 10 years ago NFL really wasn't that much of a kind of big deal over here obviously it had its fans and everything but now I mean we've got regular games over here we've got more and more English clubs sort of being uh, being made up and everything and there's a big you know a much bigger fan base uh, over in England so you know for those that do like the NFL and everything Everything. it's great to see it sort of growing over here um, but for me personally I'm I'm just not that big of a fan um, moving on another spot in one I've probably answered this at some point before but I suppose it does keep changing a prediction of Leeds is finished this season um, that's Leeds United for those of you that don't know to be honest I it, it's it's so it's difficult to say. For me personally, I still think we are going to struggle because um, we just—it's we, impossible for have to have any consistency. It just—it just doesn't seem possible with the team and the current system and, and everything. Um, I mean, I know we've not done bad recently. We also, we've got a decent victory at home against Hull, and then uh, a nil-nil draw down at Charlton, which apparently we should have won. But apart from that, there's still nothing that has really changed my mind on how this season is going or changed my views on anything. So, for me, uh, you know, it's hard to pinpoint an actual thing. I don't think we will get relegated, but I think it's sort of going to be a maybe 18th, 17th position finish because. I mean the team just isn't good enough to be sort of up mid table and you know up challenging for the playoffs which people said we you know we could at the start of the season uh, but for me it's it's not something that's going to happen and um, yeah I think it's just going to be a big struggle for the rest of the season so I would have thought it's probably going to be like I say an 18th or 17th position finish which you know I could be wrong and I hope I am proved wrong uh, you know don't, don't get me wrong in that but um yeah, I mean, I've made my feelings very clear on sort of the <laughs> Leeds United this season, how I'm feeling about things, so I'm, I'm not very optimistic anyway, put it that way. Uh, so thank you for that question. 
uh, onto Twitter. Prediction of Super League table next year. Grand final winners and Challenge Cup winners, etc. Um, hmm. That's all. It's always really hard to predict uh, the Super League table um, and sort of how things are going to go. Challenge Cup winners, like I suppose Challenge Cup, you usually have the usual suspects up there. Um, I, obviously, I. There's a little bit of bias there towards towards the Rhinos, but I mean we had such a top season last season. Um, yes, we've we've lost um, some some big players and big names and some of the old guard in obviously Simfield, uh, Peacock and Lulawai, but I think we've uh, sort of recruited strongly and we've got still got a decent strong team for next season. So I would definitely expect us to you know hopefully get to the Challenge Cup final again. Failing that, you know you kind of got useful sus suspects like I say. Um, you know, St Helens, I imagine, you know, will be fighting for it, and Huddersfield possibly, uh, Wigan again, they'll they'll be fairly strong. So yeah, one of those for the Challenge Cup, and again for sort of the Grand Final winners, or you know, who's going to finish top of the league. It's just so hard to say. I mean, Grand Final winners, especially you know, with how the the uh, playoffs work and everything now. Um, you know, predicting the table is completely different to the grand final winners. Um, again, I would expect the Rhinos to be challenging and be up there, uh, but definitely sort of closely followed by, uh, you know, your Saints, your Wiggins, uh, you know, Warrington as well, Huddersfield, even Casford might, you know, give it a, a bit of a charge. Uh, but we uh, will have to see, to be honest, on, on that one. But I think it's going to be a very exciting year once again. Last last season was a really great season. Um, so many good and decent matches and close, closely fought matches. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, to next season of Super League. So thank you very much for, uh, for your questions there. Um... Hmm, who have we got? What's your opinion on Tyson Fury? Uh, for those of you that don't know, Tyson Fury is a boxer who recently became... Did he became, become a uh, heavyweight champion of the world? I think he, he beat uh, Vladimir Klitschko anyway. Um, my view on Tyson Fury... Basically, before this match came out... It uh, came up, should I say... He was one of those boxers that I'd always kind of heard the name of... But when I'd ever had kind of seen him or heard stuff about him... I didn't really pay that much attention because I didn't really like him um, and since the the uh, the match happened uh, the fight happened and everything I, I dislike him even more basically I mean everything in the lead up to the fight obviously there was a, the original fight that ended up being postponed and then the lead up to the actual fight itself and I mean I I have a big problem with box anyway I think the arrogance there and the way that some of the map just is isn't called for. I know it seems to be part of the sport and everything, and you've got to play mind tricks against your opponents and everything. But for me, it just puts me right off. I, I really do hate it. And some of the things that Tyson Fury were doing was just just pathetic and really sad. Uh, and I mean, it's been made even worse recently. Um, you know, it's kind of been, been made clear that he's made comments over the years, sort of, you know, bigoted comments and stuff about homosexuals and various things. Obviously, he's coming out and, and denying it and everything, but, you know, people are saying otherwise. Um, so, yeah, I, I really don't have that much of a, a high opinion of him anyway, put it that way. Uh, and the fact that he's up for Sports Personality of the Year just... Uh, just really annoys me like part of me thinks that he's probably going to end up winning it sort of the the big furore that's happened over the past few weeks for him being nominated for sports personality of the year you know it's led to petitions the petitions um against him sort of you know being you know taken away from from the nominations and everything and not having a chance of winning but i think that's probably going to spur a lot of boxing fans on because he does seem to be fairly popular with a lot of boxing fans which I don't know, it's fair enough, but I really don't like the man and I'm really disappointed that he's anywhere near the Sports Personality of the Year uh, kind of shortlist. Uh, speaking of that, uh, someone has asked, who do you think should win Sports Personality uh, of the Year 2015 and who do I want to win? Um, hmm, who do I think will win? I don't know, to be honest, it's really hard. It's kind of one of those, in fact, let me just quickly get the, uh, the list up. Um... I mean, there's a lot of people in there that are deservedly need to be in there. I'm really pleased to see uh, Kevin Sinfield is in there. Um, although I've personally had a little bit of a gripe with him doubt, uh, due to uh, a journalistic uh, kind of encounter with him a few years ago. Um, he really is much deserved of being at least being nominated. 
Um, I mean, personally for me, I think he he won't win it. He's the person I want to win it, um, but I don't think that he will. Just just because of the way that rugby league is kind of portrayed out there, I don't think it's um, you know it's definitely not as popular as it, it should be really. So although he will get a lot of votes and basically the whole rugby league family will be behind him, um, I really don't think that he he will be up there unfortunately. But if he got in the top three, I think that'd be pretty good going for him. Uh, but if we look at everyone else that's in there, we've got Lizzie Armstead, the uh, the cyclist. We've got Lucy Bronze, uh, the uh, the women's footballer. Uh, Jessica Ennis Hill, Athletics, Mo Farah, uh, Chris Froome, Tyson Fury, as I just mentioned, uh, Lewis Hamilton, Andy Murray, um, Adam Peter, who's a swimmer, uh, Greg Rutherford, uh, Kevin Sinfield, Max Whitlock, who is a gymnast, and that is it. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, we look at kind of what's what's happened. I mean, I, personally, it's pro I think it will probably be maybe Lewis Hamilton. Um, obviously, you know, winning that third Formula 1 title. I think he's like only the third or se no, second person, uh, British person to do that. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's probably going to be up there. Um... Andy Murray did a lot for us to win uh, the Davis Cup. Um, oh, I don't know. Like I say, I've got a bad feeling that Tyson Fury is going to end up kind of being up there. Um, but hmm, I don't know. Chris Froome, I hope, has a good chance winning the Tour de France, of course. So I think probably it's going to be Lewis Hamilton or Andy Murray that will win it, but I would love Kevin Sinfield to win it, basically. Um, but again, we'll we'll have to see because sports personality of the year has come. I don't know, a little bit of a farce over the past few years. But um, yeah, that's that's my opinions on it anyway. Uh, who? What have else have we got? Uh, what uh, what does Christmas normally consist of in the Jones household? That's a nice question. Um, what does Christmas normally consist of? Well, it's it is actually quite a consistent kind of uh, thing thing that, that has always happened. Um, it's obviously changed over the years through obviously losing certain family members that we don't go to visit anymore. Um, but currently at the moment we will wake up fairly early in the morning. Um, obviously because I get so excited and I just have to get up and open the presents of course. Uh, no, I mean we usually get up about sort of 8 o'clock I would say, between sort of half 7 and 8 o'clock. Uh, we'll uh, we'll go down have some breakfast and uh, and then sort of gather around the tree and open presents and everything. Um, usually, sort of send a few phone calls to but yeah, send phone calls because that's what you do. Um, <laughs> make a few phone calls to family members that we won't get to see that day. Uh, then we usually go down to uh, my brother and sister in laws and and uh, to see my nephew. Um, and uh, we usually stay around there with uh, a few more family friends and um, stay there for sort of. An hour and a half, two hours or something. We usually have bacon butties and uh, oh god, what's a drink? Uh, champagne and orange juice. What the hell's it called? Books fizz. There we go. We have some books fizz. Um, and again, we sort of watch watch Lucas open his presents and everything, and just uh, just have a, a laugh and just do what families do on on Christmas Day. It's always lovely. Then we usually come back home. Uh, just have a little bit of lunch, uh, sort of a light lunch, and sometimes my uncle and other family members will just quickly pop round and nip round. And then we always go over to my auntie's on Christmas Day. She always uh, she always cooks and makes a, a, a lovely Christmas dinner. And um, we usually go over there, and uh, her uh, cousin uh, comes round and everything. And it's usually just a few of us. My granddad used to go before he passed away quite a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, it's just a little gathering round there, and then yeah, that kind of takes us through uh, through to the end of the day. But yeah, it's always really nice. Uh, usually the day, well, it's usually the day after Boxing Day. Actually, uh, we always have all the family round at our house, but it's been moved to Boxing Day this year. Uh, but yeah, that's always nice as well, having having a big gathering. Because for me, like you know, Christmas really is about family. Um, on a personal note, it is anyway. Uh, you know, obviously. Obviously, gift giving and everything is always very nice, um, and the receiving of gifts. And if you're obviously religious, you've got that aspect to it as well. Although obviously, I I don't have that part. Um, but yeah, family for me at Christmas time, it's family should be an all year round thing. But I think Christmas just has that special kind of I don't know that special feeling to it when kind of family members can gather around and just have a laugh and eat too much and drink too much and yeah I, I always love it for, for that aspect of things so yeah that's a uh, sort of typical Christmas in the in the Jonesy household um, and best Christmas film oh that is a tough one 
Um, hmm. Actually, no, I say it's a tough one. I know exactly what I'm going to answer. Uh, but I do have quite a few. I mean, Miracle on 34th Street, it, not the original. I have seen the original, but I do prefer um, the later one that... Was it the early 90s, I think, with um, with Richard Attenborough? Yeah, I think it was the early 90s. Anyway, that that's always lovely to watch at Christmas time. Uh, I do really like The Grinch. I think The Grinch is a great film. Uh, Polar Express, as well, is fantastic. I mean, there's always a lot of movies that you watch at Christmas that isn't always actually that Christmassy. Um, but uh, for me, a, a more recent one has been at, uh, Alice in Wonderland, the um, uh, Tim Burton one. That always seems to be on at Christmas. And I just, for some reason, I always love watching that at Christmas. But for me, hands down, the best ever Christmas film, and I don't care what anyone says to me, hands down, it is The Muppets Christmas Carol. For me, it is not Christmas until I have watched The Muppets Christmas Carol. Um, you know, you've got all the other Christmas carols and everything. Um, again, I quite like the more, more recent one, the animated one with Jim Carrey. Um, and, you know, all the other originals and everything are alright. But, you know, you've got Muppets doing the Christmas Carol, the story of the Christmas Carol. You've got Michael Caine playing Scrooge. It doesn't get better than that, guys. It really doesn't. So, yeah, for me, it will always be The Muppets Christmas Carol. And my mum agrees. She's always like, you know, wait, are we going to watch it soon? Are we going to watch it? So, hopefully we will watch it soon because I'm yet to be in a Christmassy mood. Um, so, maybe when I watch that, I will uh, I will feel more in a Christmassy mood. So, yeah, my answer to that is definitely The Muppets Christmas Carol. And that brings the end to this week's Jones's questions. There are a few left over, but I think I'll move them towards the... Um, uh, the bumper question time uh, episode like I said that'll be between sort of Christmas Day and New Year's but you've heard all the kind of questions there a nice mixture so just go wild like I say I want this to be a really long uh, but also kind of fast paced uh, kind of question time video and like I say I'm set, setting the slate clean so even if you've asked say another question this year and you feel like you want to ask it again you can do but you know more newer ones would be better really but just go mad go wild ask whatever the hell you want you know send more than one question you're not restricted to one uh, you know steve on twitter always sends sends more than one in which is always really great um and yeah there's a few more that i want to answer from uh, from him uh, next time round so yeah send them either in the comment section below just on this video not on any of the others just so I can keep them all together or if you want to send them to my Twitter um, go to at Chris Jones LUSC and use the hashtag Jones's questions make sure you do always use that uh, that hashtag I mean it doesn't matter if you forget but it just makes it easier for me uh, to sort of keep keep tabs on them and collate them together so use hashtag Jones's questions at Chris Jones LUSC um, and yeah hopefully we can have a really good uh, kind of festive Christmas time Christmas time question time we can have a really festive question time around Christmas time guys that's what I'm trying to say uh, so thank you to everyone who has sent questions in for this week I hope everyone is really well if this is your first time here then please do consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing that would be very much appreciated and until next time guys take care of yourselves and I will see you all very soon <laughs>